I'm now recording. Uh, hey guys, I'm Deco, uh, one of the officers of WebDev, and uh, today we're going to start off this semester by talking uh, for a few lessons about front-end development. Then later on we'll introduce some uh, back-end development. Uh, the main reason for this is just so that we have a more practical introduction to JavaScript where you see what's going on, and then later on you'll be, um, you'll be more I guess it will be more practice with the language uh, for the purposes of learning how to move all of that to the back end. Uh, meaning that today we're just going to talk about some very basic HTML and CSS. It's something that I imagine a lot of people are very familiar with, but uh, just for the sake of those who are not, we're going to go ahead and go, in, go into that. Um, so first off, just kind of a, a high level discussion of uh, what's going on. Uh, HTML is an acronym stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Um, the idea, original idea, is kind of traced back to sometime in the 1940s or 50s, uh, just because that it's a very convenient idea to be able to use plain text to kind of represent uh, objects on a page. To say, using only text, being able to say, this is where an image goes, or this is where a list would go, and so forth. And uh, later on, when the web evolved and we started having uh, graphical uh, you know, user interfaces, uh, we got to the point where we needed a way for developers who work mostly with text to do the same thing for consumers who are more interested in those pictures and lists and headings and marquees. For some reason, they thought that people really liked marquees. Maybe it's a screen size thing. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and that's really why we need it just because um, trying to do everything visually from the developer's standpoint can be very cumbersome. Um, it, a lot of people do it as beginners. You know, there, there's Dreamweaver that some of you may have played with before. Uh, you can make website with Microsoft Word. And there are all sorts of uh, what you see is what you get editors that are surfacing nowadays. Um, I should have probably saved one of them and, and showed it, but they exist out there. Some of them are nice, some of them are not nice. Um, but the point here is that for developers, it's a lot more efficient, especially uh, as you become more and more proficient to just being having this very descriptive way to say this is where this element of the page goes, and then a user could figure out how to display it. And HTML, if you've never seen it before, it's a language that's composed entirely of tags. Uh, this is a basic tag. It has those angle brackets and inside of which you have kind of like the, the description of the tag. And uh, usually you have an open tag and a closing tag, and then within it you have some sort of content. But uh, as we start talking about using HTML, you will see a lot of tags. And that's probably not going to go for go away for quite a while in web development. Yeah, and this is just a basic, basically the components of a tag. Um, you probably don't have to worry too much about the actual names of them. It makes it easier when you talk to people about tags. Uh, but for the most part, you'll just figure it out as we start using them. And this is just an example of what a tag might look like. Uh, this is a div tag. Div stands for division. And we'll find out all about those because they get used all the time. And uh, by putting some of those tags together and nesting them one within another, you can make an HTML document, uh, which is identified by the trademark HTML over here at the top. And uh, you can see the body body is just basically the actual content of the document. And uh, naturally, you can grow. You could add more things. There's a head addition to the body. Um, there's a link over here. A stands for anchor that will take you to Google if you press on it. And uh, there are a lot more tags. And I can click on this, and you will see all the very, very many tags. Uh, there's summary and, uh, I don't know, and Ruby. This is not a tag that lets you write Ruby code, by the way. Uh, does it say what it does? Yeah, for East Asian topography. I found that out at some point. Basically. Uh, when you have, you're saying that this one has uh, these symbols on top of it. This is kind of a tangent, but it's pretty cool in my opinion. So it's going to draw them above it. Uh, it's very useful for uh, <laughs> Japanese and similar languages. 
where you have different pronunciation for more complex symbols. But yeah, don't just put this on a page and try to type Ruby code inside of it. It will not work, Tomer. Uh, yeah, uh, for the most part, I concluded that these are the, was it seven or 11? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are the eight tags that you probably will use almost exclusively in web development. Someone say table? <laughs> okay, so the, um, the table tag, I, I was thinking about including it. Tables can be useful. But the thing about them is that there is only one thing and one thing that they should ever be used for. Can anyone guess what that is? Anyone? A table? A table. Uh, who said that? Who said that? You? OK. You know what you get? Yeah. So throughout the semester, I'm going to give out PHP hammers. I'm not going to be giving out these PHP hammers uh, because I don't have any yet. Uh, but if I ever point at you and I tell you you get a PHP hammer, your responsibility is to keep track of how many times I give you PHP hammers. And then the semester, you tell me how many you got. And if you got the most, you'll win a prize. Yeah, and the prize will be a real prize, not, not as real as the PHP hammers that I give out. <laughs> uh, moving on. <laughs> These are what the tags are, uh, and then the one word, or two words, I guess, description of what they do. Um, the vision is very abstract. It's mostly for layouts, which we'll get to uh, later today when we talk about CSS. Anchor, um, naturally there are no ships moving around in the web, dropping anchors all over the place. Um, it's basically a point on the page that you want to be able to quickly jump to which is why we kind of anchor a point on the page so you could scroll to it. Uh, but, it's u but it's also used for hyperlink. I'm not sure how that came about, but that's how it's used. Uh, they couldn't have like a, an HL or something. Actually, there is an HL. That's a, a horizontal line, I think, divider. Silly. Um, all the different H's are headings, different sizes. That's what the number stands for. Image is image because the the A and E were apparently painful to type in the 80s and 90s. Um, span is one of those things that it's, it's basically a paragraph without, without the, the spacing above and below it. So you just kind of put text inside of it. It helps you identify it, usually for JavaScript purposes and styling. And then uh, the lists and list items. You, we, we will see the difference between unordered and ordered lists soon enough. And uh, just to show you guys the importance of most uh, things, if you go on, on Facebook, for example, that's where I found uh, these statistics, and you search for what tags they have on them, I found that a typical page would have about 100 divs, you know, 400 uh, anchors, this many uh, lists, and uh, 20 headings, uh, which I think is kind of uh, indicative. It, also, if you search for table, you will probably never, ever find a table because people just don't like tables. They're evil, I think. Um, yeah, but divs are really significant. They're all over the place. We use them because uh, it makes sense to use them, because what they do is they take everything that's inside of them as content, and they kind of separate it out from the rest of the page as some sort of division, meaning that you could say, this division of the page represents a comment. And when you do that, you can then go in and using uh, JavaScript, you can interact with the comment, decide what happens when one clicks on it. Or using uh, CSS, you can style it and decide what it would look like. Yeah, question? <laughs> oh, that's probably just your friends posting statuses about how they're at WebDev right now. <laughs> and the person talking doesn't like tables and <laughs> using the table tag. We should do pizza. We should do pizza? OK, uh, so here's pizza. I don't, I don't know why people are telling me to search for pizzas. All right. Everyone OK, pizza. yeah, everyone can get pizza. People <laughs> viewing this later cannot get pizza unless they pay for it on their own. That's all the pizza we got. I'll pause. OK, so that's pretty much all I have to say about uh, HTML. Uh, there's obviously more to it. 
we'd get to the fancier, more advanced stuff later on. Uh, but for the sake of keeping this discussion relatively short, so we could actually um, get to, to see some actual code today, I'm going to move on to talk about CSS. What's CSS? What is CSS? Great <laughs> question. Uh, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. Um, if uh, you're familiar with it but never heard the term before, you're probably wondering what's so cascading about it. Uh, that has to do with uh, the inheritance and the way that styles are calculated. Uh, but it really doesn't matter. Just call it CSS. No one will ever call you out on it. And what does it do? It's basically a way for you to define the appearance of um, the content on your page. Uh, like, uh, like I told one of... Uh, one of the attendees here during the break, which wasn't really a break because it's a part of the recording, because I forgot to pause. <laughs> um, the, the idea behind the separation uh, of websites into HTML and CSS is that uh, the HTML is basically just the content with the addition of uh, some, some way to identify what type each content is, which is what tags are for. So I have some content, like a uh, hello world as a bit of text. And then the only content that should go in HTML would be that content, what should be displayed. And then not how it should be displayed, but what kind of category that content belongs to. Um, and then you take this ability to categorize content. And using CSS, you can define how it should look. Uh, the main idea here is that when you have that, you could have the same kind of content displayed on multiple devices, multiple screen, multiple browser scenarios, whatever, and you just have the one HTML page that has the content and what type it is, and the CSS goes ahead and tells you for that particular screen or device how it should actually appear. Um, that's uh, kind of like the ideal way. It's often enough not done this way, but uh, maybe, maybe one day. So uh, there's a good question of, uh, I guess I just answered, why do we need CSS? We could write all of the same stuff in HTML. It's just uh, very messy. And um, there are also other high level uh, reasons why we do it. Uh, but this one is more of an example that shows you the power of CSS. Uh, and this is something called CSS Zen Garden. You can find it by just searching Google for CSS Zen Garden. And what this is, is basically you have, okay, that's, let's go ahead and search for it. Yeah, and uh, what you have is you have this page over here. It has some content, some discussion about the Zen of CSS. Um, I don't know if anyone ever reads that. They just kind of work with it. Uh, but the idea here is that they give you this plain HTML page, which was actually over here. You could get this HTML file. Oh god, it's huge. Okay, uh, and I think that this is the file I have over there. And if I were to open it, index.html, and that's what it looks like. And all you see here is content. Like I said, it's basically heading, information, uh, links, uh, and so forth. Uh, but the idea behind uh, the Zen of H of CSS or is uh, CSS Zen Garden is that people could just take this site and give you all sorts of CSS files that go with it and using only CSS they can make things like this. I'm pretty sure that they're required to not have any JavaScript or anything. So, you know, it looks like an entirely different site. And some of those would be um, responsive so they would look differently on, on phones and, uh, you know, and computers. Uh, but that's basically the idea, that you kind of want to separate your content from your style so that the same content could go with different styles without actually having uh, to put any additional strain on the developer who is lazy, lazily doesn't want to do anything for the designer. The designer can figure it out on his own or her own, its own. I should just use it. Yeah, and uh, this is basically what CSS looks like. You have a selector, a property, and a value. You could have more than one property and value pairs. Uh, but yeah, there's no additional parts of it, structures, or anything. It's just a whole bunch of these. 
And here's one that takes an H1 and colors it blue. It's very simple. You could almost read it as though it was English. Uh, and you could put it right in the middle of your HTML file, like this. Uh, and that's actually as far as I'm going to talk about CSS outside of giving example. Because uh, it's a very simple uh, structure. There are additional things you can do, uh, mostly in terms of this selector over here. This selector could get really, really long and complicated. It can select more than one thing. Uh, but for the most part, this would just take, it, it all eventually comes down to the idea that you select something and you modify uh, its attributes. Uh, and the last thing I'm going to talk about is this box model. And I'm going to kind of put this on hold and come back to it later on when uh, it makes more sense. Um, now, if you go to today's event page, fresh and refresh. And this is what it looked like before I added the style sheet. Right? It's basically just the content, right? Uh, the only thing over here that's inside tags, which is content that you cannot see on the page, is this little thing over here at the top says a very basic page. I'm going to send this page to the other side. Um, and it is actually displayed. It's displayed over here. Title is uh, the title of the whole document. It's not shown anywhere within it. It's shown outside of it. Um, if you have one window open, it might be the title of the window. Um, if you have more, it's going to be the title of the tab. And the rest of it is over here and over here. I have a heading and, a te and text. And in the CSS that comes with it, basic CSS.CSS, um, what I have over here is I'm selecting two tags, H1 and P. And I'm doing one modification on either one of them, just changing the font size. And uh, just for the sake of hilarity, I made the, head, the H1, which is the big part, really small, and uh, the P tag, paragraph, uh, as big as I could. Well, I can make it bigger. How about 500? OK, Control-R doesn't seem to work for some reason. Um, yeah, where'd it go? Any, any guesses? It's right here. <laughs> yeah, and make I can, I can zo make it all caps? Yeah. OK, it was like text transform. Uh, uh, OK, let, let, let's look at that. So um, I never memorized any CSS because, you know, I have, yeah. I have things to fill my life with. Uh, but if you, t if you search the word CSS, followed by something you want to do, like make text all caps. Not only will you find that someone had already looked it up, you will also find documentation that tells you how to do it. Yes, yeah, so I can do H1 text transform capitalize. Um, anything more, and it also tells you the different properties and what they do, but I just made this one text transform uh, capitalize. Refresh the page. Control R doesn't work. Uh, uppercase is what I wanted. Good call. Uh, was it Drew, where do you want to set it? Drew, you get a PHP hammer. If you have a PHP hammer, uh, it counts as one PHP hammer. <laughs> Yeah, um, before I move on to the next example, is there anything else you guys want me to do to this page, just, just for hilarity? Make it red? Is someone yeah. saying marquee? Yes, please. <laughs> ah, yeah, so here's, this is the only time that you should be using a marquee. Um, there's this tag called marquee, and can anyone guess what it does? It's actually a time machine. I should have downloaded it again just so I could do the styles. In. What that's going to do is it's going to make it so that uh, whenever it's about to change CSS attribute, uh, it's going instead of just going from one to another, it's going to smoothly transition. Oh, look at that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, let's move on to the next file on my list of files which is, oh, what is it? It is lists. Uh, this file is very plain. It has almost no information in it, just this list item. I'm going to get rid of the style. And yeah, list, list item one, list item two, list item three. Uh, instead of just text, 
I can put fancier stuff in it. Uh, I can copy this image over here I have into a list tag, which means that I need to get rid of all of this and close the tag over here. And let's copy these three lines a few times. So now, instead of those three list items, we're and now I have numbers instead of um, bullets. And I have a corresponding uh, link tag. It's called rel equals style sheet uh, href equals lists.css. And let's look at the content of it. Um, I made two classes in it, one called no style and one called Greek. Uh, <laughs> Greek is fun, and we'll get to it in a second. But for now, let's just set this list style as no dash style. And what property this gives it is list style none. What that's going to do is it's going to get rid of um, it only applies to unordered lists, which is what this was originally. Yeah, it's one word. No, it applies to both. I just forgot the dash. Yeah, I, I think that once you apply a, a list style to a list, it doesn't matter if it's ordered or, or unordered. Uh, and now you can see the bullet point disappeared. And there's a more fun, uh, there are the more fun things you can do, like change it to Greek. And what that's going to do is it's going to give it alpha, beta, and gamma. And you're probably wondering, what if my favorite alphabet isn't included? Well, guess what? It is. Yeah, uh, the, philosoph the philosophy behind uh, a lot of stuff in HTML and CSS is that uh, let's include it all. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very close to being white. Can you guys see it? Yes. Barely. Um, there's uh, there's Chuck Norris. No, Chuck Norris is not actually white. <laughs> is it? <laughs> you do know what happened, right? I know what happened. Okay. Uh, I think it has to be hashtag. Yeah, because it's just evaluated by Chuck. Yeah. Uh, what it's gonna do when I give it hashtag Chuck Norris? No, is that, does that not work? Do you remember how it's supposed to be done? Whatever. Um, Chuck Norris CSS. There you go, what? I found it. This is it. Oh, it's only in the BG color. It's not in CSS. CSS doesn't evaluate. Yeah, um, here's, here's one reason why you want to keep your style in CSS and not in HTML. Because if I do something, I said BG color. Uh, which is kind of an alternate way to um, to set HTML to set uh, set background color in um, HTML. BG color. Chuck Norris. I don't know why you would do this. Like the the guy who came up with it, just what was he doing? Yeah, it's red. It's the color of Chuck Norris. <laughs> Now, I uh, believe what it does is it assumes that it's uh, basically an RGB color of the form C and then, uh, you know, zeros because the first character is valid. Um, where is it? Because the first char character is basically valid um, hex. And that's one of the ways you actually display colors. So I can do, um, it's a very common way in web to display color. You have uh, an octothorpe which most people call a hashtag, followed by uh, six hex characters, which are basically numbers that go from zero to nine and then into letters A, B, C, D, and E. And the first two represent uh, how much red, followed by how much green, followed by how much blue, meaning that uh, zero, zero, FF, zero, zero. Since these two represent red, these two represent green and blue, uh, it will be fully uh, green and um, kind of formats to positioning. You could either position things uh, basically going from whatever, wherever the parent is uh, based on an offset from like the top left corner of it, or you could offset it based on the top left um, corner of the, the whole page, 
or just relative to where it would normally go. Uh, and if you wanted all of this to be at the very right, um, let's see, I'm going to do position. Uh, would fix to go to this. What if I do a relative and then give it? Well, I think that what it is is that you need to set the body to have some sort of position, and then you could change it to fixed. Yeah, I'm doing it wrong. Absolute fix this to the page, right? Absolute yeah. is to the parent. Yes. <coughs> yeah, uh, that kind of works. <laughs> My hammer. <laughs> what? Hmm? what I just tried to set all of those comments to a line to the right. Floats. Yeah, floats is probably the better way to do it. I, I like positioning over floats just because floats can be messy. But if I do float uh, right, things gonna look almost the same. It basically takes it to the left and then reduces everything else to kind of fall to the left of it, the yeah. same height. Yeah. With uh, let's make this one 200 px just for kicks. So you can you can have a sidebar floating over there, and then the rest of your content would fall inside. This projector is really bright red. The blink is deprecated, non-standard. So many warnings, not supported. <laughs> Why would somebody? Oh look, they, they yeah they added a fake. Is this an image? I think it's an image. Where did my cursor go? Oh, it's. Uh. Anyway, um. Were you gonna talk about like mar margin? Oh right, right. So this last thing over here, the box model. So that's a fun part of divs that a lot of people um, don't like for good reason. But. Um, any kind of HTML element has beha has kind of around it these three things. Uh, you have a border, so you have padding outside of which you have a physical, like a viewable border, and then margin. If I were to go and take, um, let's say, this comment box, and I set a border to be one pixel solid and uh, I don't know purple. What it's going to show up as, did I close the page? I closed the page. I have a very thin one pic. Uh, let's make it 10 pixels, just because. Yeah. What the box model, what the picture I have over there basically shows, this one over here, is that for every element around the content, there's this border. And then in between the content and the border, you have padding, and then outside the border, and before the next content of the page, you have margin. Meaning, if we were to add uh, padding, let's make this one five pixels, it's gonna add extra space between where the content goes and where the border goes. Yeah, and it's a little bit, I can make it a little bit more exaggerated, so it's noticeable. And then uh, you can see where it is on the page. Like, look at how close it is to the right over there. If I were to add a margin, uh, 200 px. It's a good idea. It would push it 200 px inside. And the nice thing about Chrome for developers, mm, is that um, first off. It gives you this interactive box ma model for everything. So I can select uh, these comments over here, and I can see all the different values that go and where they go. So I have a 10 pixel. I can even change this, make it 900 <laughs> pixels, uh, just because I can. Uh, I can make it uh, taller. What is it? 800. And you have a really good 
kind of visual display of it, which is one of the reasons why Chrome developer tools are so great. Uh, and also when you just hover over, that, over any element, you can see uh, kind of like the different parts of the box model represented. 